National Nurses Forum in Hobart. Uh, and I'm speaking here with Marilyn. Marilyn, could you introduce yourself, please? Yes, I'm, I'm an independent nursing consultant, um, and my particular interest is in um, nursing professional development and regulation of nursing. So, uh, but I'm here actually in a different role. Uh, I'm actually also the chair of the Australian College of Nursing's um, Community of Interest in History. Hmm. So I convened the History Conference, which was held yesterday. Oh, tell us um, a little bit about that, can you? Well, it's um, it's a growing, it's a developing area, but we've always had nursing history uh, forums, but uh, this, um, we're trying to uh, up the kind of... Um, uh, involvement and visibility of nursing history. Why is that important? Uh, well, nursing history has a way of informing what's going, you know, things that happen in today and in the future. Um, and there is a kind of learning that you can do. And also there's a development of, of history through what people have been doing more recently as well. So yesterday, for example, we had a paper on um, a coronary, coronary artery catheterization. And so this is not something that's been around for 120 years, uh, but um, the um, presenter gave us a really good um, description of its development over the years and what the difficulties were today for nurses in that area. Now, of course, this is definitely not an area of mine, um, but it, it showed a really good um, recent history and also a lead into the um, issues and how, how technical it's become and, and the issues that they have in terms of managing or uh, looking after people um, who are having that procedure done. So that was a really good one. And then of course the other one was um, that came to mind for me anyway is um, the uh, presentation that's about uh, Aboriginal nurses, Indigenous nurses. Oh, so debt best. Yes, yeah. so debt best, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's work that has she's really brought to the fore and continuing to do so in terms of the role that many of those, that all of those nurses play, um, have played in the, in the history and, and in the, you know, the development of the westernised um, nursing uh, profession as well and how they've used that and, and um, worked on, you know, how they've, have, they've been able to take that back to communities but also um, become leaders in, in the field. And, um, and so that was another uh, strength paper for me as well. Um, there was another really good one which was about the auto, the, it was autoethnography. So there was, the presenter was actually using her own experiences over time in terms of what was happening at the time as well. Um, and, uh, and that was to do with nursing education particularly. And I think it resonated with a few of us because we kind of came from that era a little bit. The yeah. In what way? What was it? Um, well, it was about how the development of nursing education from hospitals to um, uh, universities occurred and, this, uh, and how the nursing groups came together in order to facilitate to, that to happen. And, and what she was doing was looking at whether her perspectives and her time as a, a younger nurse at that point in time um, were similar to what was documented. So she did a lot of archive work, obviously, mm. to, to do that. And so there was a, um, you know, a, a sort of things came to light about uh, why maybe we're still um, having people say to us, um, well, wouldn't you be better back in the hospitals in the good old days kind of thing? Mm. Um, and, and she was saying how that uh, may have come about because of the way that this progressed, um, how the transfer progressed at that particular time. Mm. And that perhaps we could learn from that in terms of trying to fix that problem 40 years later and still people saying that to us. You know. That's very interesting because yeah. it is an, it's quite a thing, isn't it? Still it within is. the profession. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And what about from today? Any takeaways? Um, well, I, um, only, I'm only here for today, uh, but I enjoy the um, plenary sessions that we have. I think we had three really good speakers. I think um, certainly for the first speaker, um, he, uh, the, his presentation uh, and all the work that's been done in terms of men in nursing um, that the college has been engaged in over the last year it came from the last forum that was held at the Gold Coast last year. And there were uh, a couple of things that happened there. I was there at the time as well. Um, and um, there were a couple of things that sort of came up at that point in time. Uh, and he raised this issue about uh, um, the fact that, you know, men in nursing are you know, there's always this sort of like men can't care kind of thing, you know, and um, and so I thought that his paper was, uh, you know, having 
developed over the last year the college is really sort of committed to, to um, uh, advancing um, the uh, concept that men can care and can be in nursing um, and there's nothing wrong with that, you know, so, and then strengthening um, the idea of having men in nursing as well mm -hmm. um, and getting over the prejudices around that. Yeah. So that was a really good one. And then of course, um, being a his history person, um, I enjoyed Professor Willett's um, presentation. For those who weren't there, tell yeah. us. Tell us well, what um, she, her connection was that she has a family. She's a she's an ancestor, or one of her ancestors is Henry Brooks, and he was involved in engaging Nightingale nurses in, in the Sydney Infirmary in the 1860s. Um, so that's when Lucy Osborne came to Australia uh, with a, a, a cohort of nurses, um, Nightingale nurses, sent um, uh, by Florence Nightingale. So that was interesting then, of course, but she led that into today um, and the profession today as well. So, so once again, bringing history from the past, you know, the, the history from the past, past mm -hmm. through to today. And then um, the third presenter uh, was really good in terms of um, showing us how uh, we can actually affect policy, what we could do to actually engage in policy at national level um, and at, at political level um, and um, and why we need to do that as well. And why do you think we need to do that? Uh, well, I, I believe that uh, we've got to have a voice. Like my, A lot of the time we get um, sort of thought of as just that um, sort of amorphous group of women, usually, because mm. like I said, there's not a lot of men in nursing, um, amorphous group of women, but uh, there's a whole lot of talent and um, expertise in that group and that voice needs to go forward so that we can actually um, improve on some of the policies that are made around the health system, around our health system, and around um, what is available for patients and so on and so forth. So, if, if you could get on any policy uh, committee or strategy right now, what would you choose? Very difficult. Mm. <laughs> Very difficult. Um, I probably would choose aged care, mm. and I think probably just um, a small experience, but also it's such a topical issue at the moment. And also, you know, we've all, I've just gone through parents and that sort of similar situation. Mm -hmm. So there is a time at which it becomes a reality today, particularly with our parents all living a lot longer mm -hmm. and, um, um, and, and we experience as the uh, families of those people going into care, as well as being the carers and the nurses providing that care. So, um, yes, I think probably that would be... You'd like to influence aged care. <laughs> so You'd like to influence aged yes. care. Fantastic, Marilyn. Thank you very much. Now, I'm just going over here to the very patient. And I'm going to lean against there because I think that looks like a good spot. It is a good spot. Mm -hmm. And could you introduce yourself, please? Well, I'm Anne Mathieu, and I, my nursing career has been in the primary health care sector. Mm -hmm. um, this year, I've had a change of focus, and I've moved into a position with a couple of nurse entrepreneurs who have set up a home nursing service. In um, whereabouts? In Ipswich in Queensland. Oh, okay, fantastic. Now, what have been your takeaways from the conference? Well, I came to the history day yesterday yeah. and my head was just spinning mm. because there was resident, every paper that was presented, there were some residents. Um, you know, I, I can remember being in the cardiac catheter lab, I can remember, you know, so that resonated. And that was really my interest thing. Today, I've, it's been very timely because I've been in the session on nurse entre entrepreneurship. And again, there are examples in the aged care sector of how they're developing the workforce. So it just resonates again. And and I, can know. you tell people who don't know the profession as, uh, as well as you, what, what is nurse entrepreneurship? What is that? Well, these are nurse-led models of care. Yep. So in the home care setting, there are the big players like Blue Care or some of the church groups. But for it to have a small, small business owned and operated by nurses is... New, mm. and I think we give a different focus. What is that? I think it's more person-centered, family-centered. As I said, I'm new to the area, and I have been horrified to some extent that policy is to look after people in their homes, but the infrastructure is sadly lacking. And my my role is fairly simple. I do intake interviews, and I say, "How can we help? Tell me a little bit of your story." 
and we'll try and lighten that physical burden for you so you can do the emotional work that happens at this time of life and because it leads into end of life care. And is it easy to set up a nurse-led business like that or are there many barriers? Um, I think the reputation of the two directors certainly help. One's a nurse practitioner in private care, well known in the area, and the other nurse um, is, had retired from managing a residential care facility and had, a two, had, a, had, had had a tertiary fellowship previously around aged care. So good reputation, well known on issues within the area. Um, and really it's built on that. There are barriers in that we have to make sure our policies and procedures are up to scratch. And that's my role now, is matching those to the new aged care standards that came out of the first classes. Um, we've had our first implementation in the past with some minor administrative changes, updates. Um, I think there's a whole lot of room there to make it better, better. Mm. but we've already got four funding streams and we've also, for the um, palliative care, the registered nurse goes into residential aged care facilities to provide palliative care. We've had a research study done on that work already, just a preliminary study, mm. and it was presented last week at the local primary health care network forums and to raise the views, so we're doing something right. Um, staying on top of the, the policies and procedures will be hard work, but necessary. Fantastic. Now, anything else you'd like to raise about the conference or issues for nursing? Oh, oh don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very I'm much. I sat on the primary health care reform strategy in the ah, mm -hmm. And really, when I think back on that, you know, it was a great idea, but not much, you know, the change of government. So we set up the idea for the Medicare Mm. And then a change of government, and Misha will remain nameless as the health minister at the time, just overrode it. And now the primary health care networks are huge. The one that I belong to goes from Brisbane to Gundagindi. Mm. And looks, you know, you just cannot, cannot manage health care in that way. And there's no peak? Mm. There's no peak body? No peak. Um, yes, so what would you like to see then in primary health? Oh, I'd like to see more placements for undergraduate students. Um, we, we need to draw on that experience of the, the later career nurses who are getting up to retirement age and really embed those early career nurses into the primary health care setting. Um, there's the, the elephant in the room, of course, is the industrial side of things which is beyond my scope of um, practice mm -hmm. stroke expertise. Um, and that, that, that just gets tougher and tougher. Mm -hmm. So watch that, this space for a very long time, probably. Well, I've been watching it for a long, long time mm -hmm. now. Thank you very much, Anne. I noticed yeah. everybody's heading into the things now. You're still live, so did you want to still be live? No, I want to. <laughs>